All the antivirus and private browsers in the world won't help you this time. Hacking has gotten a lot worse over the last decade, with some hackers able to bring entire billion dollar corporations to their knees. But whether these hacks were done as revenge of some kind, or just for the laughs, they were all unstoppable. These are the 10 most devastating computer hacks of all time. Number 1 is the Sony hack. Let's start off with what is considered to be one of the most damaging hacks of all time. On November 24th, 2014, Sony Pictures was the victim of a well-planned hack which infected multiple employees' computers with malware and according to the hackers, led to the release of 100 terabytes of data, including employee information, secrets including how much actors were paid, and even unreleased films. The hack was carried out by a group known as Guardians of the Peace, who demanded that Sony cancel all screenings of the Seth Rogen and James Franco film, The Interview. Despite the massive amount of damage done, nobody was ever caught for the hack. That's totally worth it though, it was a funny movie. Number 2 is the Conficker Worm. First discovered in early November 2008, the Conficker Worm was a virus that targeted the Windows operating system by exploiting vulnerabilities in the code and linking it to other systems to make a massive net controlled by the hackers who made it. Conficker infected millions of computers in over 190 countries, including government PCs such as the Manchester UK City Council desktops, the French Navy computer network, and over 100 of Germany's armed forces his systems. The name Configur is said to be a combination of the words configure and a German curse word. It's been said that the virus was created in the Ukraine, though to this day it hasn't been verified and no arrests have ever been made. It got so serious that on February 13th, 2009, Microsoft offered a $250,000 reward for the arrest of the Configur Worms creator. But to this day, nobody has ever been able to claim it. Number 3 is Heartland. On November 20th, 2009, Heartland Payment Systems announced that their network had been hacked. Heartland, a credit card processing company located in New Jersey, claimed the cyber attack occurred on multiple occasions between December 26, 2007 and the day of the announcement. According to the US government, over 130 million credit cards were compromised, though Heartland went on to say that they'd lost $2.6 million and had absolutely no idea idea how many of the hundreds of millions of cards that they processed had been copied. 28 year old Albert Gonzalez and a gang of Russian hackers associated with him pulled off the hack in subsequent heist. Gonzalez was arrested and extradited to the United States and sentenced multiple times as he'd also been responsible for the hacking of companies like TJX and 7-Eleven as well as stealing upwards of 300 million dollars in total. He was handed a 20 year total sentence for what proved to be one of the biggest hacks in US history. Number 4 is the DOD attack. Being the first juvenile under 18 years old to ever be imprisoned for committing a cybercrime is really a title that you probably should not be proud of, but if you're also a teenager who practically brought the entire United States to its knees, you just might be. Jonathan James was only 15 years old when he managed to successfully hack into some major systems at the Department of Defense, specifically computers at the Defense Threat Reduction Agency. In July of 1999, James accessed over 3,000 thousand messages and emails between the DTRA employees and even compromised the systems that controlled the physical environment on the International Space Station. This breach shut down NASA's computers for nearly three weeks and it cost the agency over $41,000 just to flush out James's code and fix their systems. After his release, James was constantly in fear that other cybercrimes would be falsely blamed on him and this led to a suicide on May 18th, 
2008. Number five is Court Venture. This hacker not only scammed a massive company, but ended up helping some really bad people steal the identities of over 13,670 American citizens. In March of 2012, Experian, a global corporation which specializes in credit and marketing services, acquired a business called Court Ventures, which aided in personal data retrieval. During this time, 22-year-old Vietnamese hacker, Hu Min Gyo, used his computer skills to breach Court Ventures security and pose as an investor. He was given access to millions of Americans' personal information and used this access to sell their identities online to over 1,300 buyers. He managed to make nearly $2 million doing this, that is, until his arrest on February of 2013. On July 14th, 2015, he was sentenced to 13 years in prison. Experian has been trying to explain their way out of this mess ever since with little success. How exactly do you explain that a young 22 year old was better than your entire security system? You just, you're done. Number six is Project Revolta. At only 15 years old, cyber genius Michael Kals was barely old enough to shave, let alone hack advanced programming code. But that didn't stop him from taking down some of the internet's most visited websites. Between February 7th and February 14th of 2000, the West Coast Quebec youth, who went by the hacker name Mafia Boy online, launched a number of distributed denial of service attacks, which overloaded and eventually shut down popular sites including eBay, Amazon, CNN, and Dell. He even managed to take down Yahoo, which held the title at the time of the world's number one search engine. Kals called the hacking operation Project Revolta and was said to consider the entire thing too easy. Sources say that soon after the hacks were committed, he simply settled down to watch the movie Goodfellas only to have police come knocking at his door. He was sentenced on September 12, 2001 to eight months in open custody. Number seven is the Morris Worm. In the late 80s, the internet was barely known outside of military networks, universities, and other education and government facilities. However, just how big it actually was wasn't precisely known, especially as it was still growing at the time. So, on November 2nd, 1988, Cornell University graduate student Robert Tappan Morris developed a digital worm virus that could break into every computer that it could find on the web and report back that it existed mapping out a huge network. Launched at a computer at MIT, the Morris worm self-replicated, infecting thousands upon thousands of systems and taking down multiple networks connectivity. Though he designed it as a non-damaging worm, the virus would infect a system multiple times, severely slowing it down. According to the United States Government Accountability Office, the accidental attack caused as much as $10 million in damage and made Robert the first person to be convicted under the Computer Fraud and Abuse Act. Number eight is Melissa. On March 26, 1999, 30-year-old David L. Smith of Aberdeen Township, New Jersey, unleashed a monster onto the internet that became a bigger nightmare than even he could have ever imagined that it would become. Named after a stripper that he'd fallen in love with in Florida, the Melissa virus acted intelligently, spreading to other computers through a Word document in emails. Corrupting Microsoft Outlook, Melissa would send itself to 50 people in the user's contact list and then once opened would then send itself again to 50 more of their contacts. In the end it was estimated that she did more than 80 million dollars of damage and caused multiple companies such as Microsoft and Intel to shut down their internet connections temporarily. Smith pled guilty to the creation of Melissa on December 10th 1999 and was sentenced to 10 years in prison. But lucky for him he wormed his way out as he only served 20 months behind bars and had to pay a $5,000 fine. Number nine is Project Chanology. 
By now, you've likely heard of the hacking group Anonymous. Well, something that you might not know is that one of their first ever publicly known hacktivism cyber assaults started on January 16th, 2008, when the group took on the Church of Scientology in an attempt to save people from their controversial religion by reversing the brainwashing. Dubbed Project Chanology, Anonymous launched a massive DDoS attack on Scientology.org, which actually took the website offline briefly. On January 21st, 2008, the public saw Anonymous for the very first time when they released a video called Message to Scientology. In it, they declared their intent and accused the church of trying to censor a video of possibly the most famous of their believers, Tom Cruise, making ridiculous claims about what the religion was capable of. It's bad enough the guy's jumping on couches, now he's making claims about alien gods. This religion's weird. And number 10 is Spam House. This is one of the absolute most devastating hacks that is considered by many security firms, programmers, and cyber activists to be the largest distributed denial of service attack in the history of hacking. Started on March 19th, 2013, Spam House, a Geneva, Switzerland based spam prevention service, came under attack from hackers using nearly 100,000 servers, the most ever used for such a cause according to records. The action also had the honor of using the most bandwidth ever used for a cyber attack at 300 gigabits per second. Massive sections of Europe lost internet connectivity and speed and the attack went on for days. Sources claim that the hack was carried out by Cyberbunker, a hosting company run out of an abandoned NATO bunker in the Netherlands, and criminal gangs from Eastern Europe in Russia with the goal of shutting down Spam House, who they simply didn't like. See, this is why you do not get on the bad side of hackers. I love you hackers. You're wonderful, you're all great. <laughs> so, those were the 10 most devastating computer hacks of all time. But I want to know from you, what other hacks do you know of that deserve to be on this list. Leave your comment below because I'll be reading through them and I'm going to pin the best one to the top. But as always, thank you guys so much for coming by today. Remember to come back tomorrow and every weekday at exactly 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because I'll have a brand new video for you. I'll see you then.